I just ordered a can of ADA liquid urethane for filling my stock motor mount, but that isn't this video. This is the video where I show you what I do with the rest of that can, which is going to be trying to make a bushing like this. This is the NYPPD motor mount or the Torque Solution clone motor mount uh, polyurethane bushing for the 2011 to 2016 Scion TC. If you've watched my previous videos, you'll know I'm using a retrofitted 95A bushing right now, and it's really, really hard. And I really wanted an 80A bushing, but no one makes them. So I'm going to try to cast my own by using my 3D printer. Using my digital caliper, I measured both the polyurethane bushing and my motor mount to have the most accurate measurements I needed to make a 3D model in Tinkercad like this. And I'll put a link to this in the video description below. But I printed this out in PETG, so it's nice and durable plastic. And then I'm going to spray the inside with this universal mold release before I fill it with polyurethane to hopefully aid in the removal of the bushing afterwards. Um, even if I can't push the bushing out and I have to cut it out, this should at least make it easier to do that because it should hopefully not stick to the polyurethane once it dries. The model I'm printing is going to be one inch tall here, 0.33 inches tall here, 0.75 inches across here, 2.5 inches across on the inside and 3 inches across on the outside. So if I actually take one of the bushings I have in the car now, this was actually an unmodified one that's too long. I actually had to trim the top here off. But if I take this bushing and show you how it fits into the mold that I've printed, you can see it's a nice exact fit. <clears throat> Just like that. So I'm hoping that once I cast my mold and then let it dry and then cut it out, it'll be the exact size I need it to be. So I ordered this less than a week ago and it showed up today via FedEx. This is the ADA High Performance Liquid Urethane Base. Uh, yes, the can is dented even though uh, the box was fine. I don't think that's going to be an issue. Um, and then the activator. So I went with the high performance because it's going to be tear resistant and heat resistant. And since this is the uh, torque motor mount, you want the tear resistance. And since this is going to be next to the header, you want the additional heat resistance. Um, I don't know if there's going to be enough to actually do the stock mount and then all four bushings. Um, but I guess we're going to find out. Due to the 15 to 20 minute working window with the liquid urethane, I'm going to be doing some shared footage between the video where I fill my stock motor mount and the video where I make uh, polyurethane bushings for my NYPPD motor mount slash torque solution clone motor mount. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do here though is make sure that my work area is level. I've put some shims underneath the table legs to get it nice and flat. Uh, this is more or less for doing this project. We will use the level again for um, the stock motor mount when we put it in a box of sand. With the table level and my stock motor mount level for my other video, I'm ready to start mixing the polyurethane. But first, we're going to have to spray some universal mold release into the molds here. I've already done these two. Um, I would recommend spraying it outside and then just come back inside and then take your finger and spread it around. Make sure it's in all of the corners. Um, you don't want to have the polyurethane getting stuck to the plastic when it cures. All right, so I'm being careful not to actually uh, shift anything on my workspace since it's all level. But I've removed the four clips on the lid here using some pliers and I've already loosened up the lid. So let's take a look at what it looks like inside. Uh, that doesn't look right. I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be liquid. So I'm going to call them up and find out what happened here. I got in touch with suspensions.com the next day on their uh, website chat, and they told me that this is manufactured in Colorado, so it can freeze over sometimes. They do have a note from the company that says, if product is no longer in liquid form, place in oven at a temperature of 170 degrees until it returns to a liquid. Be sure to check the product every 5 to 10 minutes when heating. Should take approximately 30 minutes. Stirring may help speed the process up. All right, so it's only been in here for about 5 minutes. I'm actually still waiting for it to come up to temperature. Um, but this is our dedicated crafting oven. I didn't want to put this in our actual food oven. But I'm going to check on this in, in a few more minutes and see where it's at. Uh, that's looking much better. Almost there. I'm going to go ahead and use the supplied stick to give it a stir and see if I can speed this up. So 30 minutes. Looks good. So this is the consistency. Let's bring it downstairs and mix in the activator now. All right, so now we're going to take the entire contents of this bottle and pour it in. 
So this will also include the coloring because I chose red. And so make sure you get all of it in there. So they said you should just stir it for about 15 seconds, should be good, but make sure you're getting all around. Let me make sure I'm getting all around on the sides. So I want to fill these all the way to the very top. It's been about 15 minutes since I've added the activator to the can, and the polyurethane at the bottom is already firmed up. Uh, normally you have 15 to 20 minutes to work with it, but I didn't let it cool down enough after I heated it up since it was frozen, and uh, I only had like 8 to 10 minutes to work with it. Something to keep in mind if yours shows up frozen as well. It's been about 30 minutes, so the polyurethane is firmed up a bit. It looks perfect on this first bushing here. The second bushing, unfortunately, has some imperfections, but it's just on the top of here. It started to firm up on me as I was pouring it, and it became unmanageable, and I must have accidentally scraped like some uh, polyurethane from the top of the can that I missed when I was mixing it uh, right there. But I don't think it's going to cause any issues. And this one looks really ugly because it was really hard to pour at that point. Uh, but this will be my test bushing. Uh, whatever I learn trying to free the bushing from the mold here, I'll apply to these other two. I printed these molds using eSun PETG uh, at 245 degrees, and it's got a glass transition temperature of about 185. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put these in the oven upstairs because the oven is stabilized at 150 degrees for the uh, stock motor mount bushing. So these will be fine, assuming I have space. If I don't have room, then I'll have to let this sit in a warm room for seven days to fully cure. I wouldn't have even considered putting these... Uh, bushings with the plastic molds in this oven, if not for the fact that I've been monitoring it for the last three hours for the uh, stock motor mount bushing, and it's been holding steady at 150. Now, like I said earlier, the glass transitioning temperature is 185, and what that means is that plastic won't even get soft until 185 degrees. So since this won't go over 150, they should be fine. I'll have to let them sit in here for about 18 hours at 150 degrees, and then they'll be done. 18 hours is up. Let's check these results. All right. So here's the first bushing I did, so no change in how it looks, no surprise. So here's the uh, second bushing. So it looks like a uh, little bit of clear bubbling uh, where the uh, polyurethane had some issues before. You can see it right here. So I'm just going to snip the excess off of there, but the rest of it seems fine. And now the third one, which we had the most problems with. So actually, that looks pretty good as well. It seems pretty solid. All right, so let's bring this downstairs and see if I can pop it out of the mold. I was successful removing the mold from the third bushing, so this is actually the first bushing I casted. First thing I have to do is take the 3D printed support off using my chisel here, and then I'm going to take the metal inner bushing sleeve and center it over this part here, and then tap out the inside part of the mold with my hammer, if I can get it centered. All right, now I just gotta take the sleeve out and getting the rest of the uh, mold or plastic off is gonna be a lot easier at this point.
this last bit of sleeve actually popped off easier on the first attempt, but I'm going to have to use my chisel here to help pry this off. There we go. That's the one that I casted first, and that looks perfect. All right, so here's the second one. So the top surface still looks the same, but the rest of it is perfect. Yes, I did totally uh, cut myself with a chisel while I was freeing this one up, so be careful. All right, now to put this in the car and see how these feel. I have my NYPPD motor mount out. If you don't know how to do this, I'll include a link above to the two and a half year update for this mount where I show you how to remove and reinstall it. Uh, for, but here is the uh, 95A uh, bushings that I have installed. They're actually slightly wider than uh, I guess the original bushings were because you can see the indentations here. But I'm gonna take these out and slide in the new ones that I made. Fitment was perfect, so and it looks great. All right, let's get this installed. Right, there we are, it's reinstalled. I actually tightened this down to 60 foot-pounds after seeing the uh, metal sleeve in there get deformed really easily. Uh, before, I was tightening it down to 70, so I think 60 will be fine. I'll run some tests to make sure, though. All right, let's see how it feels when I start up the car. Doesn't feel as bad. I can still feel the car starting up more so than normal, but it's not really rough like it was with the 95A bushing. I've put several driving hours on these new bushings and they're holding up great. Um, there's definitely a vast reduction in vibration noises in the car compared to 95A bushing. So no more sounds coming from up here, the doors or the rear hatch. I still have some noises from the, uh, the dashboard here that I haven't been able to find, but they're uh, less frequent and uh, not as loud. Uh, I do get the vibrations from the steering wheel and the pedal while driving, but very minor. I don't really notice it unless I try to pay attention to it. And of course the car does vibrate more when starting up, but not as jarring as with the 95A bushing. Um, and of course if you're in the wrong gear, if you're like too, too low of a gear and you're trying to accelerate, the car wants to vibrate then, uh, it will vibrate a little bit more, but not as bad as with the 95A bushing. Uh, keep in mind I do have polyurethane exhaust mounts installed, so that will also add to the additional vibrations in the car. As for performance, um, I can't really tell the difference between the, the 80A bushing and the 95A when shifting. Maybe if I was on a track, I would notice a uh, timing difference there, but daily driving, I, I don't notice it. So if you do track your car though, I would definitely recommend doing the 95A, of course, because you're obviously trying to get better times. Um, of course, there's no wheel hop, but that was eliminated by just putting in a 60A a motor mount. I'm very happy with the 88. This is exactly what I wanted for the car. It's got a nice balance between uh, the noises that I get in the car versus the performance that I'm getting. I'll of course include a link to the model that I printed out um, in the video description below. And I'll also include one for the first gen TC because someone was uh, kind enough to give me the measurements of their torque solution motor mount. Um, it's untested as of the posting of this video, but uh, the measurements look correct. It should work. I hope this helps you out if you're looking for a replacement bushing or a different shore hardness bushing from your NYPPD or Torque Solution Noter Mount. Uh, if you haven't hit subscribe to my videos, please hit subscribe now. And as always, thank you for watching.